Bedouins that are here in Raha? Okay, every time someone asks me this, I feel sad. Because um, as a Bedouin, a black Bedouin, I think that there is no roots for me. I remember only two uh, generations from my family, my mother's side and her mother, my grandmother. I don't know a, a lot of about um, my ancestors as a black Bedouin, but the story says that all Bedouin who live in the Negev, they are Arab and Muslims, and they've be, been kidnapped from Africa or Sudan as children, and they brought to the Negev desert to be kind of slaves for community leaders, Bedouin community leaders. While the exact origin of the Afro-Bedouins is unknown, their ancestors were likely sold from East Africa during the 19th and 20th century. Under the British mandate, slavery was made illegal, but the practice was unregulated in the Negev's Bedouin communities, continuing into the 1950s, formally ending only after the State of Israel was born. During the 70s, the Israeli government began relocating Bedouin tribes to official settlements. Many Afro-Bedouins saw this as an opportunity to become landowners and move up in society. Today, around 60% of Israel's Afro-Bedouin live in Rahat, the largest Bedouin municipality in Israel. However, they are still marginalized and segregated from the rest of Rahat's Bedouin community. White Bedouin who live in Rahat consider them low-class people, and they call them even behind the back slaves. The white side of Tarabin tribe just refuse that the black side of them move to live among them. So you'll find two neighborhoods, one next to another, uh, one side is uh, black and the other side is white, and there is a barrier between them. A mother of four, Elham Al Kamalat, became a tour guide to show the plight of her community. She takes us through El Midan, an all black neighborhood where people live among debris and running sewage. Even though slavery has been illegal for decades, Afro-Bedouin are still called Abed, a derogatory Arabic word which means both slave and black. But change is on the horizon. For the first time, an Afro-Bedouin was elected into the municipal government. It's easy to blame others for your situation, but we decided to take responsibility for ourselves. We wanted to make a change from the ground up, and we decided to cooperate with the local government. It was important for us to break tribalism in Rahat and give everyone a feeling of belonging. Before being elected to city council, Majid Abu Bilal made his life's work to improve the status of women and children in Rahat. His NGO stepped forward, increased the rate of female high school matriculation from 70 to 99%. I must instill in the youth a sense of self-respect, motivation, and ability. I want my daughter to know that, like me, she can run for mayor. I want the Afro-Bedouin community to be in a position of equality, that one day this community will break out and be a leader. Choices in leadership, however, were bleak for the Afro-Bedouins. Up until the municipal elections in October, no black candidates were on the ticket, and many felt pressure to vote with their traditional tribes. Every Bedouin tribe who got slaves, black Bedouin among them, they asked them to elect their candidate, not to go to vote to uh, another candidate, white candidate from other tribe. So you, we own you as a black people, you are part of uh, our um, tribe, you have to vote for someone that we choose for you. <laughs> While one push for equality is embracing modernity, there is another, more traditional force working towards the future. This is the only tent among the homes and apartments in Rahat. I preserve the culture, mentality and laws of Bedouin life. It's very important, otherwise we'll be lost. I'm also the head of an association that promotes coexistence. We host guests and explain about our life. 
Today, everything is better. But it wasn't so long ago we were the deprived among the deprived. Sheikh Hassan lives with his four wives and 20 children. He aims to both preserve Bedouin customs and help the advancement of the Afro-Bedouin community. As society is beginning to slowly shift, Afro-Bedouin leaders from all walks of life are looking to the future with optimism in their hearts and minds. Shelby Weiner, I-24 News.